How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go ahead and get started with our four arms for our drone that will be placed on the bottom of the bottom plate here. Uh, but before we get started, if you're new to the channel or you've been following along, you want to help out the channel a little bit, please hit that like button and subscribe. I've got videos like this coming out all the time. So if you want to be notified, make sure you ring the little bell there too. All right, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is hide my top plate. So I'm gonna come over here to the top plate and press space bar. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to uh, create a new body and I want the body inside the drone frame assembly here. So we're gonna select our drone frame assembly and we are going to come up here to this little blue step and we are gonna create a new body. And uh, Keeping up with our housekeeping, we're going to right click and rename this as our arm. And then um, we need to make the master sketch visible, but here's the thing. The master sketch is only associated to this bottom plate so far. So you can't reference a sketch in a body that's placed in another body. So um, you know, I've looked about how to get around this because I think it is a little cumbersome, but um, there's a reason for this. Um, so we'll come here and we're going to copy this. We'll right click and we will copy the master sketch. And we don't want to copy the dependents. We just want to copy the sketch. So we'll select no here. And then we're going to place it in our arm. So we will right click oh, or just press control V and it'll place our master sketch, but you notice that it's a child of the, um, the, the wrong thing up here. We want it to be a child of our arm. So we'll take that master sketch and let's drag it into our arm. And now we have our master sketch that can be referenced inside this body. And the reason that is, is because each one of these individual parts um, is an individual part and it needs its own references because you would be able to potentially export a single one of these and print it, 3D print it, or you know, put it into another file all by itself. And if you did that, you would still want it to have the master sketch to reference. <clears throat> so another thing um, before we get started here is just make sure that all of the other master sketches are hidden. Um, if they're not hidden, then it's gonna make it difficult to reference the master sketch that's actually in the arm. So we're going to press the space bar and hide this one. Um, and if you have the master sketch in your um, top plate, you want to hide that one. You can see it's grayed out, so it's hidden here. And then we'll come to the arm, and we are going to press space bar to unhide the master sketch that is a child of the arm. And then let's hide the bottom plate completely. So now we're just left with the master sketch that's visible inside of our arm. And we will go ahead and select our arm and create a new sketch. Let's select the XY plane as our reference plane. And we can get started here. The first thing we'll do is pull up some geometry from the master sketch. We'll click the external geometry tool and we will pull up some of these points here for mounting. And I just want to reiterate, if you're unable to pull this up, that means you have over here in your model tree in one of your other bodies, you have a different master sketch active. Make sure you go into those and select your master sketch and press the space bar so that the only master sketch that is visible is the one that's in your arm, the body that we're working on. So let's come and finish selecting the points here for our mounting on our motor. Select the center here, grab these points really quickly and now we can come back and draw the outline of the arm we'll use our polyline tool sorry I'm going a little fast now we'll grab our polyline tool and we will start at the origin we'll come vertical make sure you snag that vertical constraint there let's make a diagonal line and we'll come back and make sure you snag the constraint to fix onto this x-axis 
and coincident again with the origin. We'll add some constraints to this. First thing we'll do is select these two perpendicular lines and make them equal in size. And then we will grab these two um, outside lines of our arm and we will make those parallel with the parallel constraint tool. And the next thing we'll do is add a length dimension between these two points. We'll use that with the dimension length tool and we'll call this 12 millimeters. And then we want to select this end point line, or, or excuse me, this end line and one of the sides of our arm. And we're going to go ahead and make those two perpendicular to each other. Now we've got kind of this arm that we can place wherever we want, but let's get it placed without uh, using dimensional constraints. Let's go ahead and uh, grab the polygon tool. This is the first time we've used this tool in this series. So we're going to want to select the octagon. And we will place an octagon at the origin of our motor mount uh, layout. Let's drag that out. And then let's grab one vertice of the octagon and a vertice on the arm that we just drew. And we will make those coincident. And we'll do the, the same thing for the other side. We'll grab one point here, one point on the octagon, make that coincident. And now you can see we've got fully constrained and we only used one dimensional constraint for that. So kind of cool. Now let's create some of the holes and slots for our mounting hardware. We will use the circle tool and create some holes that are centered here on our layout. Um, now we want to dimension these. These two we want to make equal to each other. But this one we want um, a little bit bigger. So let's give this one um, a diameter. We'll select it and use the dimension diameter tool here. You can drop down, you can select radius or diameter. And then we will give that five millimeters. And if you're not sure why we're doing that, you'll see it in just a, a minute after we create the solid part. And then let's select one of these, make these equal to each other and give them a diameter of three millimeters. Now let's come up here to our motor mount and we are going to put some slots on these. So we'll come and use the slot tool. Again, I think this is the first time we've used this. Um, actually, no, we used this on our, our top plate. So let's go ahead and select that and we'll select one of these points and we'll come out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hide all of my constraints to make this a little bit easier. Um, if you aren't sure how to do that, we can come up here to um, transfer all of the constraints to a different plane. So it cleans it up a little bit. Again, um, it's up here in the right. And I believe, let's see, the tool switches selected constraints to the other virtual space. So if you just click that with no selected constraints, it's going to send them all away. So let's go ahead and create more slots. Now, if you try to, I think we went over this in the last one, if you try to make these both just coincident, it's going to make just a straight line. So come out here and make it a little bit bigger. And then let's go ahead and make all of these points coincident to our layout. Coincident, one more. And then let's select all of these and make them equal to each other. You just have to select one, one arc on the, on the end of the slot. It can be outside or inside either one. Let's make those equal. And then let's give these a diameter of three millimeters. And there you can see we have the slots for our motor layouts. Now let's give some shape here to our motor pad here end of our arm. Um, and this is going to be really easy. We'll just select our polyline tool and get a coincident constraint on one of the vertices here and then pull it down and make sure you get that vertical constraint and make sure you come down far enough that you're horizontal from this point. So you'll see why in just a sec. We've got the vertical constraint and when we come here and get the horizontal and coincident constraint, 
it becomes fully defined again. So let's do that to all of these points. Make sure you grab that horizontal constraint and then that vertical constraint. And if you miss one, you can just select it, um, vertical line, and, and use the vertical constraint here or the horizontal, respectively, whichever one you missed. And so we'll put the last one here, coincident with that point. Make sure we get the vertical constraint and then the horizontal constraint and coincident there. You can see that we're still fully constrained. Now, the last thing that we need to do is send some of these, um, these lines to construction lines. And what that does is that makes it so when you're creating a solid part, it doesn't rec recognize those lines, but rather than just delete them, if we delete some of these lines that we don't want, it's going to open up a bunch of, of um, degrees of freedom for us. And we don't want to have to go through dimensioning them, uh, dimensioning everything all over again. So what we'll do is we're going to select this, these lines here and then select this line. And we are going to use this tool right here. I don't think we've used this yet. Um, it says toggles the toolbar and or selected geometry to and from uh, construction mode. So once we send that to construction mode, remember there was two lines here. So I'll have to select that one again, send it. And now when we go to pad this part, it's not going to actually pick up these blue lines. It'll only pick up... Um, the sketch lines, not the construction lines. So a very handy trick if you want to lay something out, you can use the geometry tools here um, and then you don't have to delete it because that would open up degrees of freedom. You can just send it to the construction plane. So now we've finished with the outline of our arm. Let's go ahead and close our sketch. And then let's select our sketch and select the pad tool and you can see we've got a nice little arm there but um, it's coming out of the wrong plane <clears throat> so let's first dimension the thickness we'll just call it a three millimeter arm and then notice that it's coming out of the top of the plane but that's that's where our bottom plate is we want it actually to come off of the bottom of the bottom plate so let's select select reverse here and now you can see it's coming out of the bottom of our base plane that we drew on. And when we select OK, we can come back here and select our bottom plate and press the space bar. And now you can see that it actually sits right at the bottom. There's no interference between the two parts. And now you see why we made that hole a little bigger because this is the mounting hole for flight controller. So we want the screw to be able to go through this hole and um, just fasten the flight controller to the base plate. Now let's add some fillets to the rounded corners here. Um, if you've been following along, you can probably imagine that means we're done with this arm because fillets are put on um, as the very last step. So let's select one of these corners here and we'll come up and select the fillet tool. And we want to add some more of these corners to this. So we will come here and select add reference and come back and select other uh, corners here. And we'll do that all the way around. We're going to select these inside corners. Kind of get an angle here where we can see a few of them. I'll just kind of speed up. Just add reference and then select the corner that you want added to the fillet. Whoops, don't select the face. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Add reference, edge, add reference, and last. And then now I'm just going to increment the radius up a little bit. And you'll notice when I get to a point when these two lines here, the two edges, when they meet, I can still increment up the size of the radius, but you won't notice a difference. And that's because the radius can't get any bigger without bumping into 
um, the other fillet. So when two fillets meet, you pretty much met the uh, maximum size of your fillet, which I think for us was the three millimeters, four millimeters. Yeah, so four millimeters was the max. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that. I kind of like how that looks. So we'll select okay here. And the last thing we wanna do is create the other three arms. And this is really easy and just it's, it's preference. All of these arms are the same, so potentially you don't need to have the other three in the model, but if you want the model to look cool and look like a drone, totally okay to add these. It does kind of fill up your um, model tree over here a little bit, um, but, <clears throat> but it's a really quick way to do this. So first thing we'll do is we're gonna hide the master sketch of our arm since we don't need that anymore. So we'll go here to our master sketch and we're gonna press the space bar. Then we'll close this and we will right click copy and then you can't right click and paste it in here so we'll just press control V three times one two three so now we've created the three arms they are a child of our file and not of our part so let's grab these and drag them into our part or excuse me our, our assembly and then here's the cool part. Just select the arm here. Make sure it's selected. Come down here to placement and we will expand this property field here. And then where it says angle, let's just click inside of that and 90. And then we'll come here to the other arm. Come here to angle and make this 180. And then we'll come to the last arm up here, click in here and make that 270. And now you can see we were able to quickly place the other three parts. And now if we come over here and we make our top plate visible, you can see we're starting to get close to something that looks like a drone frame. Guys, if you followed along for this tutorial, Please help out and help out the channel and uh, smash that like button, subscribe. Um, and there's more tutorials in this series coming. And if you want to be notified, uh, make sure you ring that little bell. I appreciate the support and I will see you guys in the next video.